Someone it, it seems to me uh, most of the PhDs and the, the academic people and the scholars and scientists and what have you that, whom I've met, um, I've met a number, uh, maybe not a huge number, but I've met a good number. Uh, it seems to me that 99% of them disallow everything, be, everything that cannot be perceived or measured by the human intellect. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I find, that more clinical aspect, and that would be more Freudian uh, sort of thing, or the behaviorist model, you know, Skinner was one of the founders of that, you know, just pure stimulus response. Mm -hmm. You know, sort of the Pavlovian ring a bell. Yeah, and Pavlov's the, dogs yeah, trained yeah, to the, salivate right. when the bell rings. Yeah, and, and there, there are many people that I run into that I, I, really are trying to still force this amazing complexity into that scientific laboratory model. See, to me, you will never get a full answer that way. That's right. Uh, that's not going to happen. Because uh, there was one I was reading the other day who said that religion is just a social construct, mm. and that it uh, rises out of times of stress and difficulty. Mm. And I would say, how does that begin to explain people who have had visions and epiphanies that's right. during times that were not stressful, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the vision or the message or whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm opened uh, a door of possibility for them. And the various religious affiliations created uh, directives to act in ways that were contrary to self-interest, which again flies in the face of this theory of, of running an all scientific survival oriented mm -hmm. uh, struggle. Mm -hmm. um, there's a whole other side to us that goes way beyond that, you know, which is where we come back to today's discussion is it the is it the real or is is it the face or is it the mask? Is it the real mm -hmm. or is it the imagined? Mm -hmm. Is it the inherent or is it the societally induced? Okay, b very good. And back to uh, where I was starting: the hypnosis being the tool mm -hmm. that brings the wonderful outer world focused intellect, ego conscious intellect, mm -hmm. brings that in direct. Uh, communication with the rest of us, which we refer to as the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And something you just mentioned which is here. Subconscious is not something that Freud ever acknowledged. Freud didn't deal with that except in dreams. Uh, he did allude to that. Okay. He knew that there was something else going on other than what we consciously thought about. But he didn't live long <laughs> enough to create any formal theory of it. Not uh, not the way uh, Jung did. You know, Jung actually did. You know, okay. uh, he was, <laughs> I guess you could say he was sort of the father of that conscious subconscious world as we understand it today. He knew that there Which were many things that we didn't have access to in the rational outer world here. Okay. So from Jung's perspective, the Freud's ego, super ego, and id all existed in the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there was this whole other realm that he labeled the subconscious from what brief comments I've heard. Mm -hmm. The expectation seems to be that the subconscious is considerably larger than the conscious. Mm -hmm. If you were going to make a circle and say this is the human mind, mm -hmm. the majority of that circle is subconscious. That's true, uh, because within the subconscious there is no such thing as time, space, or distance. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's ever had a dream, and I think that's all of us, mm -hmm. in that dream state none of the laws of physics apply. And it doesn't bother us in the dream state that none of those laws actually work. You can be uh, in a totally different universe, a totally different place instantaneously, and we never question how we got there. Mm -hmm. You can be from the beaches of Hawaii to a, a castle in England, uh, you know, in a blink of an eye, and you never question, you never doubt. Mm -hmm. You can be anywhere in time, you can be anywhere in space, in the dream state. We don't care. Well, well in that sense, it's, it's, well, like in the Hubble telescope where they talk about being able to photograph the, the birthplace of stars. Mm. The subconscious mind being the birthplace of all that is most transcendent about us. And that's where it lives. The you know God doesn't live in our conscious logic uh, intellect. God doesn't live. Now I know within the individual it does, but within the laboratory and in that rational linear thinking, that isn't where God lives. God lives in the subconscious, in the universe of uh, possibilities, in the universe of. Uh, 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 and now, I'm not saying this uh, negatively, but in the irrational universe of the subconscious. That's where all of the magic the, is. The realm in which ration or reason doesn't apply. It doesn't need to be there. There's no room for it there. There's no place for it there. Well, there may be, be, there may be no need for it as well. That's right. There <coughs> is not, yeah. So the conscious ego intellect, and again, I'm using those three interchangeably, although I know most people don't. Yeah. 
And so they're just points of reference, but collectively they refer to the conscious mind. And they refer to the outer world structure. Mm -hmm. The subconscious is the entire rest of the universe. And in hypnosis you're dealing primarily with the subconscious? Hypnosis is the tool mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, that allows two-way dialogue between the conscious and the subconscious. And a two-way dialogue, that's what's most important, I believe. Okay. So it's by taking insight and understanding from the subconscious and moving it across to the conscious that various challenges, mm -hmm. um, sources of anxiety, etc., mm -hmm. can be dealt with? Readily, quite readily. Because once we get cooperation from the conscious mind to step across that boundary or to sort of dissolve that boundary between conscious and subconscious, and it takes agreement from the conscious ego to be able to say, okay, I'm willing to, you know, kind of explore this possibility here. Mm -hmm. And then once the conscious mind is willing to show up here on equal footing with the subconscious, then the subconscious will express itself very clearly. I don't need to do all of the work and all the heavy lifting in this therapeutic environment because they, they see the value and they see the truth of their own inner world belief system. Okay. It sounds like thus far, though, all we're really dealing with is what we, you know, in the metaphor we used, uh, what would be considered the face. Mm -hmm. Where does the notion of a mask come into all this, I the, the notion of dishonesty? Mm -hmm. I think the mask has more to do with the um, conscious mind than it does the unconscious. Okay. When we take, uh, you know, this chaotic universe of the unconscious and have to then bring it out into the outer world and interact with others, Mm -hmm. I believe that's where the deception, the mask, the uh, I think that's where that comes into play. Pretending to be what people want in Instead presumably of, in order to create an advantage. Right. I don't Instead think it usually are. I don't think it creates a true advantage. No. But uh, it's the perceived except perhaps in the very, very short term. Right. It's the perceived advantage. 